The debate will start with the first speaker from the proposition side. Let's go <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We're here to debate on whether to pass the policy about Myanmar's junta. This is our topic. This house will dramatically increase pressure on Myanmar's junta to enact democratic reforms. <coughs> Before I explain our policy, I would first define some terms in our policy. Pressure, first, is any kind of restriction that is forced on Myanmar, based on this policy that our side has come up with. And junta is military government dictating over Myanmar. And finally, democratic reforms is transforming the government into a government which is ran by ideology of democracy. So. <clears throat> I, as a first speaker, briefly state what our policy is and explain the first part of our our policy with details. And I'll say I'll state why it is necessary. And our second speaker, Jingu, will explain the second part of our policy and thoroughly second part of our policy thoroughly and state why it is practical and beneficial. Lastly, our third speaker, Jane, will sum up our side points. <coughs> Status quo. Myanmar is under junta military government, and they've been oppressing the people who demonstrated against them. So monks has been have been killed, and Aung San Suu Kyi, a Nobel Peace Prize winner, has been confined. Our side support. Our side will support Aung San Suu Kyi, Nobel Peace Prize winner, as I said, and leader of National League for Democ Democracy politi politically, and procure pressure from the outside world, and provide provide solutions for the chaos that might be caused from sudden reform of the government. <coughs> Before you go on, then. No, thank you. So this is our first part. First part of our policy. Aung San Aung San Suu Kyi was awarded Nobel, Nobel Peace Prize in 1991 and currently is the leader of National League for Democracy, NLD, an organization, orga, organization that tries to promote democracy in Myanmar. With, mo, with most governments around, around the globe, including the influential and powerful government, announcing that they support my Myanmar's Myanmar's people. <coughs> Myanmar's people's demand for democratic reform. This would give give hopes to Myanmar's people. Also, by demanding Hontas to release Aung San Suu Kyi's confinement, which started in 1992, and release other political leaders, would give Myanmar's people uh, centers to gather and reinforce their demand for democratic reform. Okay. Before you go on, then. Oh, thank you. Now I'll explain why this why the, why passing this policy is necessary. First, the junta government harms the citizens. Government's purpose is to protect its citizens. However, the junta government is not serving its purpose. Also, as I stated before, they confined Aung San Suu Kyi because of the fact that she is against the junta government. <coughs> they are dictating over Myanmar and has formed the clan government. We are not saying that clan governments are bad, ladies and gentlemen. We're, we're saying that uh, we're saying that by forming the clan government, they are being a bad influence to Myanmar. So it is reasonable to reform the government. Also, there has been a massacre of Buddhist monks and other Myanmar people while oppressing the protest and demonstration in Myanmar. The government, which should be protecting its people, is actually harming them. <coughs> A change is need, urgently needed. <coughs> Secondly, Myanmar's junta is ruining its economy, ruining Myanmar's economy too. Uh, if the government comp continue to oppress its people, trading problems will occur between Myanmar and EU and Myanmar and Japan. And also, the number of tourists who come to Myanmar will decrease. Tourism is the uh, main income of Myanmar. If this income is reduced, it will destroy Myanmar's economy. Also, Junta is not making good use of their natural resources. Myanmar is known for its rich natural resources. However, Junta government is not making good use of it. These natural resources used 
using effective ways can make Myanmar's, Myanmar incredibly rich. However, the government is wasting it. They're letting China to take their oils, oil so they could get weapons. This is waste of natural resources. <coughs> In summary, the government is not protecting its people and ruining the country's economy. And it is not serving its purpose. Urgent change is needed for Myanmar's people. So this policy is necessary. Thank you. Hey guys, I think you should show respect for the speakers. <clears throat> uh, first speaker of the opposition side, please come up. <clears throat> Let's give her a hand. <clears throat> Team's burden was to show that there will be no harm and that pressure increase will lead to and that uh, to democracy reform, which they failed to do so and will fail to do so also. And as the opposition team, our burden is to prove that enough pressure has been given and and more pressure will be ineffective and inefficient. As the first speaker, I will, I will present our country policy and our second speaker to know you, examine the Junta's stance and vision the summary of the debate. Um, what the prof side has given us is no different, it's no different from the status quo. And because it's no different, we will present our country policy. Our country policy is that China and India will lead negotiation with, with Myanmar. And it, will, it is to stop violence and to enact democratic reforms. What a great and, and no danger. And, and this is possible because first, China will help. China, because of the recent massacre or the recent event, China has have expressed its discomfort about their actions. In China, killing Buddhists or the monks are no different from killing their family or kin. And, and secondly, the poultry and stability. Myanmar is just right next door, door neighbor to China. And does China want any chaos or, or instability? No. And most of all, China is especially worried about their international reputation, and if they t take no actions about this, there will be negative impact on the on the reputation. So our <coughs> counter plan is having China and India lead negotiations with Myanmar Junta, and this is possible um, because it we will get uh, support from China and India. Now I report on the Thank you. Now I present a brief argument, and it is that though they didn't um, describe any international pressure they would give, they did say that they would give international pressure, but we believe that there is no need for any increased pressure. We do acknowledge that something must be done about their actions, but increased dramatically increased pressure is an, is unnecessary. Because first, there is a, already given um, pressure given on the country. Except China, India, and Russia, other countries are supporting other uh, support uh, are sanctioning trade with Myanmar, and also. <coughs> Um, Myanmar now belongs to ASEAN, but however, its membership is now is now threatened because other members require require Myanmar to strengthen um, the democracy. And the, besides other external pressure, the rising civil disobedience, as we just witnessed um, recently, is itself a uh, great pressure for the country. Um, <coughs> Also, I, I state again, even though they did not give any, any specific policy about the international pressure, even um, 
we believe that any international world policy a more pressure will be counterproductive. Till now, military and social socialist regimes have have been known to react negatively to sanctions and pre to pressure. Um, but for example, whenever sanctions were expo expo was imposed, China was always closed up. And and if we just as the pop is saying, if we dramat dramatically increase pressure on the country, all the possibility of the democracy reforms which we're fighting for now will be will will not be gained and all the efforts that the international community has made so far will be destroyed. And before I finish I'd like to ask you why we're having this debate. Why Myanmar here? And what is Myanmar anyway? It is having this debate for their people, the people who wanted democracy, who got killed because of the demo because they protested for democracy. So our counter plan is that we will have negotiation, no not pressure, but negotiation from China and India. Mm -hmm. Second speaker of the proposition side will continue. <clears throat> um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As the second speaker of the proposition side, um, I will ex explain our policy call further and explain its practicality and its benefits. But before I go on, I would like to rebut some of the points that the opposition side has brought up with. They said that there will be no democratic reform and our policy doesn't specifically state how, how we will give them this pressure. But they have not heard our full, our policy in the whole. They just heard the first part. They didn't even hear the second part. So that argument is just like, doesn't stand. Um, now I will explain our second part of our policy. Um, the pressure from the outside world. Currently, most governments are agreeing that there, these, there is a need for increasing pressure on the Myanmar government to have this democratic reform. Um, first, the United States government is going to freeze the assets of Myanmar junta <coughs> leaders, such as Tan Shue's assets. Tan Shue is now currently the Before minister. Before you go on, sir. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> is the Minister of National Defense of Myanmar. Second, Japan will also freeze their assets. And then, they will prohibit any remittance of their money. At the same time, Japan will um, stop the inflow of official development assistance that flowed into Myanmar for, uh, for humanitarian purposes and private trade. Also, Before you go on, sir. Well, thank you. And it will limit the entrance of Myanmar leaders into China, uh, Japan. Third, EU will also freeze assets of their leaders. And then it will reinforce the in prohibition of trade between the two nations and Myanmar. Fourth, the ASEAN, which Myanmar is a member state of, will criticize, will criticize severely the junta government for brutal suppression and brutal killings and massacres of their citizens. The opposition side may have say, may have say that uh, this sudden democratic reform may cause chaos in Myanmar. However, we are prepared for this <coughs> chaos. Um, we will calm down the chaos with the help of developed democratic nations. Using Myanmar's abundant natural resources such as natural gas and oil for incentives, they will help. Also, they may also say that this pressure will harm the innocent citizens of Myanmar. But there will be also help from NGOs and other um, economic aid, food and supply aid from the outside world. This policy is practical and benefactory. It's practical Before in the way on, that... Sir. Well, thank you. That it covers all the ways to pressure and aid Myanmar. With the economical pressure and political pressure, um, the reform will take place. This policy also helps the, the democratic leaders such as Aung San Suu Kyi and others to lead this movement. Also, the chaos 
they might sudden they might appear because of this sudden change will be calmed down if they follow this policy. Also, for the benefits, this policy is benefactory to about everyone. In Before Myanmar, you answer. well, thank you. After democratic reform, their citizens can enjoy democracy, which is said to be the currently the best ideology in the world. Their votes will be counted, their complaints will be heard, and their participation in politics can change Myanmar. Also, the aiding countries will gain the incentives of natural resources from, from Myanmar. This policy is a win-win <coughs> game for both Myanmar citizens and the aiding countries. Please, ladies and gentlemen, vote for this policy. Thank you. <laughs> uh, the second opposition speaker will continue, and then there will be two uh, four speeches for each side. Yes. Charles. As the second speaker of opposition side today, I'll continue on with where Nayan has left off. Nayan has just given you a counter policy and our first argument. I will now talk about the second and third arguments. But before I go on, I want to make some rebuttals on the what the Jingyu and Zhang said. Okay. We are asking the proposition side to show a link between this policy and democratic reforms. How are they? Sure that this will not provoke them. Point of information, sir. You're out of order. And Myanmar's leaders' assets are already frozen, so this again shows that what you're offering here as a policy is already a status quo. It doesn't. Well, I don't want to. Yeah. And trade sanctions are. What? And trade sanctions are already status quo. So. Trade sanctions are already status quo. So, uh, speaker, you're talking to the audience, not to you. Increasing the status quo will bring about a new policy, and they're increasing nothing. So I'll start. I'll stop. Start my speech. Our second argument is that there is no need that, and that Myanmar does not react to sanctions anymore. Myanmar has officially stated that they are not worried about Western and European country sanctions because it has trading partners such as China, India, Russia, Thailand, and Japan. According to Arcana News, Arcana News, China's trade with Myanmar's pipeline natural gas is by itself by $83 million. The timber fuel trade with China was worth $17.2 billion in 2005. Also, India and Russian military trade between Myanmar was more than $200 million. In addition, Beijing provides a steady flow of its outdated tanks and fighter jets to Myanmar military regime, which in, if, in, which in turn grants China access to ports and listening post posts along Myanmar's coast. BBC Burma analyst Jordan Gordon stated that sanctions have little effects, and Myanmar has publicly stated that they are indignant about the Point of information, sir. No, thank you. Sanctions. <laughs> the government spokesman said, instead of giving us time, instead of giving us encouragement, they always come up with threats and increase sanctions. We are insulted by lack of negotiation. Point of information, sir. No, thank you. BBC analysis states that. What is necessary for to reform is not increased pressure, but room, room to maneuver. Point of information, sir. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Our third argument is that the juntas are not are already showing room for negotiation, although although the junta soon changed their mind. They once agreed to meet with the Aung San Suu Kyi, and the U.S. statement said. We now have a progress going which should lead to substantial dialogue. Well, 
substantive dialogue. So thank you. The negotiation, the international community and Myanmar citizens have shown are obviously beginning to take effect. And the Myanmar heard Puntas also calls for negotiations, so we should listen to their demands and start <laughs> negotiating. <laughs> no, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> Enough pressure is given already, and too much will be detrimental. Thank you. Uh, two floor speeches will be given, one for the proposition side, one for the opposition side. And are there any volunteers? For the office. For the office. And this one for the proposition side. <laughs> <laughs> number 28. <laughs> number 28. <laughs> okay, number, for the number 20 for the proposition side and... No point. <laughs> Number 16 for the opposition side. <laughs> <laughs> Order! <laughs> okay, throughout this debate, the opposition's burden was to attack the opposition to show that we should not we should not increase pressure on Myanmar Center because they enacted democratic reforms. However, through, as I was listening to the debate, I could see that the um, opposition is really totally forgetting about the value of democracy because democracy is, democracy is what we need in Myanmar. However, what the opposition was trying to do was try to not look at the reality because the in increasing pressure, it can't give the immediate impact in Myanmar crisis that we're having the status quo. That's the reason why I'm for the proposition. Thank you. Well done. I agree that the policy of the proposition was made for a good purpose. And yes, democracy is needed in this region. And I, no I acknowledge it that it is a major issue in Southeast Asia. However, the policy stated by the prop is too vague. It does not state how, by when, this policy will take effect, and therefore too vague. And a policy must be specific. And I see no incentive for Myanmar's government to follow. Since if they give in, they will not have any benefits. Thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, <laughs> thank you, floor speakers. Uh, now the debate will continue with the final speaker of the opposition, Song Yujin. Order. Order. Ladies and gentlemen, even if some of you have obviously not been listening to the debate so far, I would now ask you to listen to at least the speech so you can make a clear decision in the voting process. So let's go on to point out some facts. Let's clarify some facts that have, been, have caused confusion in this debate. First of all, the proposition's team policy seems to be based on no research because in their policy, they said that their assets in the policy are freezing the economic assets, imposing trade sanctions, political pressure, so on and on and on. In the status quo, the Myanmar leaders' assets are already frozen and these political and economic and trade sanctions all occur in the status quo. So in the end, they have no policy. Their policy is exactly the same as the status quo and the burden of the proposition team is to bring up a policy that is not exactly the same as the status quo. Therefore, first of all, they have no policy. But let's go under the assumption that their policy was existent, that they did have a policy, ladies and gentlemen. Well, let's go on to examine the need, the practicality, and the benefits that they have presented. First of all, the need. Their need was that the junta are being violent, that the junta are bad, and therefore they should be doing something about the junta. They should be punished and that they should have democracy. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we agree to this, but what we're saying is that this is not the right way. Dramatically increasing pressure has a high possibility of only provoking these junta and actually countermanding the, effect, the efforts that we have done so far. If you are going to make them angry, then that means that they might actually go more, more isolate themselves, going further away from democracy, as has been the case with China. With China, sanctions have never worked, and they have already they have actually gone back into seclusion if you try to make sanctions. They have actually went back on their efforts for human rights. Therefore, we say that all military and social re socialist regimes are like this. They are provoked if you try to isolate or sanction them. They are provoked when you try to contest their power with pressure. So what we are saying is that we need constructive engagement, which brought us to our counter plan. Our counter plan
one was that we'll have constructive engagement with China and India in the lead. Because Myanmar's economic interests are closely tied to China and India, and it is also in the interest of China and India to bring political stability in Myanmar. So we believe that this, this, um, com this process that they have with each other will actually make our counter plan more efficient because Myanmar will listen and they are willing to talk to Myanmar. And this constructive engagement is more effective, as has always been the case with socialist and military regimes, as the junta are. So ladies and gentlemen, what we say is that China and is that especially China will be able to take the lead in negotiations because China recently has been taking uh, taking action on on human rights or democratic atrocities in the world today because of the Beijing Olympics. Because of the Beijing Olympics, China is worrying about its international reputation. So when Mia Farrow protested about the crisis in Sudan and how China was not taking action on the crisis in Sudan, China did take action on the crisis in Sudan. That is how sensitive they are to their reputation right now. So if we shame China into taking action, they will negotiate with Myanmar Junta. And China does have enough influence on Myanmar Junta to bring about the change. So ladies and gentlemen, we say that this counter plan is more effective, that there is a link to democratic reform in our counter plan, whereas there was no link in their policy to democratic reform. And also, their, their policy went against the spirit of the motion itself, because there is, again, no dramatic increase. It is the status quo. And their benefits were mainly about democracy and how the benefits of having a democracy in Myanmar. But in fact, since our counter plan can also bring democracy, can surely bring democracy, and will bring a better, more efficient way of democracy, we say that our benefit, their benefits can come into ours. So in the case, nothing is left in their case. Their need is, the need is our need. Their practicality was non-existent from the beginning because their policy is the same as the status quo. Their benefits are the benefits of a democracy, and these benefits exist in the counter plan. So why would we damage our relations with Myanmar? Why would we risk Taking, why would we risk reducing all the efforts that we have taken so far? Why would we risk damaging all the uh, damaging all the progress that we have taken so far in Myanmar's opening up? Because as our team has proven, Myanmar is opening up to negotiations as the U.S. envoy state, as Myanmar is weakening, because there is enough pressure already in the status quo. So we do not need to increase this pressure, and therefore their policy does not stand. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, the final speaker of the proposition side will wrap up this debate in this day. Uh, order. Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm the last speaker of the proposition side. And before I, I start on my speech, I would like to rebut a few points. I believe that Eugene has not been listening, but because she has said that there has been no research done, and then the, because they said that how is their policy different from our policy? Because if she had heard enough, she would have known that we are putting more countries, such as U.S., EU, India, China, and more countries to pressure than just China and India to to negotiate. And if she saw the news yesterday, that is precisely what the world is doing to them. And Miantas Juntas have agreed to talk yesterday at. 8, point, uh, 8 p.m. <laughs> no need for increased pressure because there was not enough pressure. Myanmar's government didn't do anything. And no change has been done for the past 10 years. And this is the reason why we're talking about this policy. No pressure and negotiation. What if they don't want to negotiate? And they have already rejected the offer that you guys have been doing. That's the reason why we're making a new policy. And that's the reason Sorry, why we need that increased pressure. Sorry. <laughs> As Eugene has been saying, all the political problems, all the problems that this policy could have been doing, what we are debating on today is not only about the political problems between countries or the struggle between nations to see who is stronger, but this is about what is right. What is right as human beings? Not right now, at this very moment, the people in Myanmar is physically being beaten up when they speak of their rights. Women are being abused by military soldiers, and people are losing their property by the government. They're taking the property from the people that you are respecting. Before you go on, ma'am. Sorry, we have no idea how serious the situation is at Myanmar. And we are sitting here talking and feeling sorry for them. Sometimes in movies, these problems are shown, but we don't really feel close to the problem since it's just a movie. But this is the real problem. Those cruel actions shown in the movies are happening in Myanmar. And think On about that point, it. Man. Sorry. What if you're the victim of this military government? What if it was your family that is being raped and murdered and taken advantage of? We cannot stand this because we have already tasted the sweetness of democracy. We know our rights and we have a sweet life. 
that is given by the fight of our ancestors. Point of information. Sorry. The people in Myanmar has the right to know the sweetness of democracy. And even though when we go through struggles right now and sacrifice some things, in the future, generations after generations will be thankful for what we did right now and not just sit back and watch the abuses of Myanmar. As I mentioned before, if it was us, we cannot stand it. And so does the people in Myanmar. That's the reason why 2,000 monks and civilians of Myanmar have already put it of a fight and all been put to death by their governments. Point information. Uh, sorry. And it is the world's obligation as human beings to take action to help them because they are fighting for themselves. And it is our obligation as the world, as a citizen, that we have to help them also. If this does not, if, and we are not, talk, sorry, and we are not talking about killing and fighting or take a war against them but to take political and economic action as we have stated before, to give the pressure to the government in order to not sacrifice the civilians. We will help Aung San Suu Kyi and countries such as US, Japan, EU, Asia, and we will help the political and economic pressure toward Myanmar. And this is right exactly the status quo. This is exactly what they're doing. And Myanmar have already agreed to talk yesterday at 8 p.m. <laughs> they have already promised the UN to cooperate in the real world, and this is the status quo. Thank you. Okay, please, 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 please don't fight. No one today. Let's be nice. Okay. 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 Put your hands down. Heads down. Put your heads down. <laughs> okay, um, those who think uh, the proposition had won, please raise your hands. <laughs> please raise them clearly. Cholun, put your heads down. <laughs> heads down. Okay, uh, pull your hands down. Uh, those, of you, those who vote for the opposition side, please. Raise your hands. Hong Jun, stop. Uh, the opposition had won by a majority. Opposition wins by 15 to 7. <laughs>